Uh, remember, I've told you all along that I'm going to be making every decision on the facts and the data that we have in front of us and understanding the science of this virus and how it spreads. Um, we're going to continue to recommend all of our mitigation efforts, but the data is showing us that we are bending our curve. You, what you are doing at home by staying home and by making sure that you're practicing social distancing is making a difference. Uh, the projections are more informed. Uh, we've, as we watch how the virus has spread in different counties, how it has not spread in some counties, and how we've had a hot spot like Smithfield and Sioux Falls, we now know that some of these peak dates are changing. It looks like the peak in Sioux Falls in that area will likely be in the middle of May. Uh, that is a couple of weeks quicker than originally we had predicted for the Sioux Falls area. Again, we remember that the state would peak in mid-June. Uh, that date is changing as well. My team spoke with the mayor this morning of Sioux Falls and informed him on what it looks like uh, for a peak and the time frame for the city of Sioux Falls. And that expected surge is ex expected to be approximately 1,200 to 1,300 beds. All of these projections and models inform us on how we need to surge up in our health care facilities to make sure we're taking care of people that need hospitalization or advanced care. Uh, so for the Sioux Falls region, when they hit their peak, peak infection rate and their peak need for hospital beds uh, will be about 1,200 to 1,300 beds for that area. Uh, we believe that that capacity is already in those health care systems, although we are not changing how we're planning based on what we gave to you two weeks ago. Um, models are dynamic. Uh, they will continue to change. And this is a virus. Um, it is fluid. But we have cut our peak, and that's a good thing and it is encouraging to all of us. And we know that our healthcare systems can handle what is coming at us, although I have directed them and us and my team to continue to over plan and over prepare so that we can take whatever is coming at us in the future. I really wanna thank Avira and I really wanna thank Monument and Sanford Health for joining us again and for helping with all of this. Uh, they have been incredible partners. I don't think there's any other state in this country that has had healthcare partners like we've had. Um, they haven't cared who got the credit. They didn't care who was putting in extra hours or work. They all just committed to be a team to make the best decisions for this state and the people who live here. And I'm just so proud of them. I'm also proud of them for being willing to undertake a clinical trial and therapeutics like I announced uh, just recently uh, for using uh, hydroxy to help the folks that are struggling with this virus and to help them heal. Um, I just think that what they have done and gone above and beyond to be examples uh, to this country of what's possible when you work together, it's been inspiring to me personally. Now, before I turn to Josh, who's going to walk you through the current projections of what we're seeing, uh, I want to reiterate uh, that the numbers look better. It looks like we're going to need less hospital beds. It looks like we will need less ventilators in the state. Uh, but I am going to continue to ask uh, that we all stay on the same path that we've been on for the last two weeks. I'm still going to plan on needing 5,000 hospital beds like I originally told you. I'm still going to plan for having 1,300 vents in the state of South Dakota because I want us to have all the capacity in the world to take care of individuals and to be overprepared. Mm -hmm. Even though these numbers we're going to show you today are encouraging and look better for our state, we need to stay the course. All of this hinges on you doing your part, you taking the personal responsibility to continue to stay at home. If you don't feel good, you call your doctor. Continue to wash your hands. Remember when you wash your hands to use soap. That makes a world of difference to use soap for 20 seconds and continue to do that. Use good hygiene and make sure that if you're experiencing symptoms that you take immediate action. 